in the U.S., interest in space flight, depending on how you ask the question, what the question is, if you if you factor everything through uh, the strainer properly, it's about the same as it's ever been. Interesting. You know, you ask people, should the U.S. be a leader in space? Fifty to sixty, maybe seventy percent U.S. citizens will say absolutely, because hmm. that's easy, right? But then when you say, okay, should the U.S. land astronauts back on the moon? Now you're talking maybe 17%. Well, that's part of the deal, but they don't see it that way. So support here and interest is pretty flabby. Um, in China and India and other emerging economies, I don't know if we can really call China emerging anymore. They kind of emerged <laughs> and topped. But um, you know, developing economies like this, interest is very high. And the Chinese in particular have done something very clever, which we haven't really managed here. We always named our our crewed spacecraft in the Apollo era anyway, you know, the Apollo program, Greek mythology, Greek mythology um, yeah. Artemis, Greek mythology, sister of Apollo, so forth. The Chinese have taken that and, and ramped it up to a thousand percent. So every spacecraft, every program, every little bit of it has some bit of Chinese mythology or cultural relevance woven into it. So, you know, the Tiangong space station is the heavenly palace, that kind of stuff. U2 is the, the legend of the rabbit and the goddess on the moon and so forth. And it really seems to resonate with people. So between that and the innate nationalism that comes when you're under a kind of absolutist government of that type has really worked for them. So they don't have these yearly budget cycle swings and cutbacks and cancellations and all that they just plan 10 years out and say okay we're going to do that and that and that and that's why i'm fairly certain they're going to beat us back to the moon with, with astronauts and they're going to do it in by october of 2020.